Okay, now if we classify functions of the kidneys, we could say that major ones. First is waste excretion. Second would be electrolyte balance. The third one is hormonal synthesis. Fourth is blood pressure regulation. And the last one is uh, glucose homeostasis. As you see here, for every single one of these functions, there would be several mechanisms and a couple of involved elements. For example, three mechanisms are attributed to waste excretion by which all of the end products of proteins, organic acids, and bases, drugs break down, and hormonal catabolism are excreted into the urine. The other interesting fun function is uh, hormonal synthesis by different renal cells such as um, cortical cells which uh, produce erythropoietin hormone and juxtaglomerular cells that secrete renin as well as activation of 25 hydroxy vitamin D into the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. Now let's talk a little bit about the causes of renin secretion in the next slide, which is very important in the maintaining of blood pressure by virtue of angiotensin system. It is said that there are three kinds of stimuli for uh, renin production by kidneys. The first one is a decreasing blood flow of afferent arterioles within glomeruli which leads to sending a signal to renin producing cells in juxtaglomerular apparatus. The second cause The second cause would be beta adrenergic nerve stimulation. For instance, in uh, stressful conditions, our renin levels are higher than normal times. The last cause is a low sodium concentration at the macular denser cells, which are located at the distal convoluted tube. They produce renin converts angiotensinogen, which is a serum alpha to globulin produced by the liver, into angiotensin 1, which is an inactive peptide hormone, and is converted into the active form, which is angiotensin 2, by an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. This enzyme itself is produced by pulmonary surface cells and endothelial renal cells. Angiotensin II has a wide range of effects, including vasoconstriction, increasing vascular smooth muscle growth, uh, increasing sodium reabsorption, increasing aldosterone secretion from outer layer of the adrenal cortex, and finally increasing bicarbonate reabsorption. As you see here, olastron enhances sodium retention in the kidneys. Okay, uh, now let's talk about azotemia in this slide. By definition, any increase in serum levels of the urea and creatinine because of inability of the kidneys to excrete urea, creatinine and other nitrogen containing compounds is called azotemia. There are three kinds of azotemia. Pre-renal, renal and post-renal. Depending on the cause of uh, azotemia, there might be a few symptoms such as fatigue, sleepiness, pale skin, thirst, edema, flapping tremor, and so forth. On the other hand, if azotemia is associated with renal failure manifestations, including nausea, vomiting, anorexia, confusion, pruritus, etc., that is called uremia instead of azotemia. In this case, 
the renal insufficiency is severe enough to need to be uh, do uh, to be done an urgent dialysis due to the high risk of fatal complications like acidemia, hyperkalemia, and uremic encephalopathy. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, azotemias are, are classified into three categories. In prerenal azotemia, there isn't enough perfusion to the kidneys. In fact, any form of shock, whether it's due to dehydration, bleeding, decreasing extracellular volume, and thirst spacing like burning, hypoalbuminemia conditions, or sepsis, and even renal artery stenosis result in decreasing renal perfusion in which end up increasing BUN and creatinine. In terms of renal azotemia, we can divide its etiologies into three parts. The first part is uh, glomerular itself. So any kind of glomerulitis, uh, whether infectious or inflammatory, it can lead to renal azotemia. The second one is tubular interstitial. For example, uh, acute tubular necrosis, secondary to prerenal azotemia, acute kidney injury because of toxins, and uh, acute or allergic interstitial nephritis, chronic tubular interstitial nephritis, and pyelonephritis. All of them are examples of this of the tubular interstitial diseases. The third part is related to the vascular causes in which result in the renal azotemia. Main examples are a renal artery occlusion for any reasons like thrombotic, embolic, uh, or because of abdominal aortic dissection due to trauma or even iatrogenic. Other examples are renal vein obstruction, chronic tubular interstitial nephritis, intravascular causes such as uh, TTP, HUS, DIC, and hypertension complications. Post-renal azotemia has to be lack has to be the lack of drainage out of the both kidneys. So anything that causes obstruction in the bladder outlet or both ureters lead to the post-renal azotemia. For example, uh, stones, strictures, tumors, obstruction due to uh, neurogenic bladder, which is seen in diabetic mellitus, all of them are the leading causes of uh, post-renal azotemia.